Welcome back. Well, today we're going to talk about physical therapy, but before we do that, we need to talk about Audie the cat. No, he was not hurt yesterday. Um, I, I think he was doing his, my paw fell asleep thing, and he'll limp and then he'll shake it out, limp, shake it out. But he seems to be fine. It's also possible he was limping around looking for attention because they're very clever. And they know if you think they're hurt, you're going to pick them up. You're going to snuggle them. They're going to get all the attention they want. And as I've told you, he has been very needy. He does not like this whole social distancing thing. This does not suit a cat at all. He likes to be very, very close to any human around, you know, just pick me up, snuggle me. The idea that somehow I'm supposed to be over here and he's supposed to be over there, that that's not a cat's idea of how life should work. So I think he's starting to really feel the, the crunch of not having access to humans the way he would like, um, not even seeing people out on the streets of the way he's accustomed to. So... Yeah, he could be playing little games to get a little more attention. Very hard to say, but he is fine. So whatever may have been wrong with his little paw, it's all better now. All right, physical therapy when we come back. Well, for a lot of us, we are just now coming out of a situation of confinement and isolation, and we may not have been able to get the exercise and just the moving around that we're used to. A lot of us got our exercise um, and, and our sort of physical fitness from gyms or from social activities like you know, hiking in groups or dancing or um, uh, playing organized sports. Uh, I know it's hard to sit back and say, yes, mostly we are older women. You'd be amazed how many of us get involved with organized sports. How many of us go off to, you know, the square dance club for our uh, cardio workouts, um, gyms, um, one of my medical insurance providers a few years ago included a gym membership along with, that was just one of the benefits of the medical insurance, and it was a Medicare supplement insurance, so everybody that participated was over a certain age, and we, it was great. We just had this wonderful little twice a week gym thing that we did. Um, very good, tailored to older people, fabulous. Um, and I will pick up that thread quickly later on, but remember that the, uh, the senior gym program, senior fitness is what they called it, I think, silver something, um, some kind of silver fitness. That I remember the silver was in there. We'll pick that thread up in a little bit. So now we have our, our lives back. And some of us are going to find that, yeah, but we're not moving the way we did. After two, three months, gyms are not opening the way they did before. Some are, but there it's not going to be you know, 30 people in the exercise class anymore. It's going to be going into the gym by appointment only. And there are going to be 20 people scattered around the gym and everybody's going to have to wear masks. And it's not going to be the same. So what's going to happen to us as a result? Well, most of us are not teenage kids. 
which means our bodies are not going to cycle back into that routine as easily as if we were teenagers. Uh, we're going to have to work for it. We're going to end up with difficulty doing a lot of things that we were doing just a few months ago. And I think the answer for many of us facing this situation is physical therapy. Um, I'm a big believer in physical therapy because what I like to do for fun is walking. It's a wonderful solitary activity. I can do it when I want to. I can do it at 3 a.m. I can do it at 3 p.m. It's just according to my own schedule. I can I throw on a tank top and go out. I don't have to worry about driving to a gym or you know, I don't have to worry about maintaining a bicycle. I just, all I have to do is throw on some sneakers and walk. So walking, that suits my needs really well. But the reason that I can walk is because I've had really good support from my physical therapist for the last 10 years because my knees started cutting out about 10 years ago. Um, at first one knee, then the other, and as you know, I had knee replacement surgery last October. Now, my knee replacement surgery went off like clockwork. Uh, I had said going in, I was going to be just, I, I was going to be the one they'd be bragging about. Um, and I hope they're not because, you know, I, I wouldn't want everybody to think that that's how simple it was. Um, but the reason mine went off like clockwork was because I had prepped, I had been prepping for years. I knew knee replacement surgery was on the horizon. I knew eventually I couldn't forestall it any longer. So I was in physical therapy, making sure I was in good shape for when it happened. Now, once I got my surgical date, and I got the date the beginning of October. It was scheduled for the beginning of January. I immediately signed right back into physical therapy. I said, we got three months. Let's just, you know, uh, if I have to come in here every day, we're going to make sure this works. Well, my surgeon got a break in his schedule the second week of October. And I took it. Um, yes, I would have loved the chance to have three months worth of preparatory physical therapy, but getting the surgery over and done with was more important. It was the choice I had to make. So I only had two weeks of intensive pre-surgical physical therapy, but those two weeks were sufficient to get me out of bed two hours after the surgery and walk three miles. So two hours after surgery, three miles walking. Oh, and without any assistance, I didn't have a walker or a cane or anything. I was just walking. Now, don't ever do that because boy, I paid for it the next day. Um, the next day I was just utterly exhausted. So I wouldn't say that was a good plan. In, in my case, what I got out of that, and I know you're all sitting back saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. Don't worry, I said it already. Feel free. What I got out of that and why it was so important to me was I wanted to make sure I would still be able to walk because as part of my prepping for the surgery, I read every possible study of all of the potential surgical outcomes from knee replacement surgery. And the most recent one I had read was a study out of the UK that showed 47% of knee replacement surgery patients still had as much, if not more, pain two years later. Wow, that's not a good surgical outcome. That is nearly 50% of the people saying there was either no improvement or the situation worsened scary. Um, I wish I had never read that particular study. I still don't know what may have been going on in that study, but I was 
determined that wasn't going to be me and I wanted to make sure I could still walk and unfortunately I got very carried away stupid 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 but I was I never used the walker once I got out of the hospital um, I, I didn't use the walker and I got out of the hospital the next day but while I was in the hospital they made me use a walker once I got home no the, the walker was just tucked in a corner somewhere and I was fine um, I didn't have any discomfort well okay take that back a very little bit usually in the middle of the night I might wake up and my knee would feel a little achy and I would just roll over and go back to sleep it never hurt enough for me to say I think I will get out of bed and go take a pill to deal with this it was just oh I think I'm going to roll over and see if I can't readjust the position that's fine where I am at now and now we are seven months later well six and a half months later where I am at now is I can walk um, I'm not using a cane at all I have not been since I guess probably a week after the surgery and I might not have even needed the cane that long but I did have it with me as a sort of security blanket um, walking I do not run but I have never run that's never been my thing um, I'm not even sure I know I must have known how when I was a kid but I don't think I run in decades but walking yes um, I can get down on the ground get up I can stand up from a sitting position um, I, I don't need to use my arms to help me anything like that the only thing I am having trouble with now is going downstairs um, I can walk upstairs like a normal human one foot in front of the other but going down that last little bit that's I'm having some trouble getting that to come to me I am absolutely not sorry for the physical therapy because that's what got me here and that's what got me here in six months um, they say that a lot of people do not have full recovery until a year after the surgery my family doctor had told me she expected that I would have serious swelling for at least two months no nope. the swelling was gone in two weeks um, just two weeks then gone uh, so no problems like that again physical therapy so that's what it's doing for me what it can do for you depends on what your situation is Far too many of us have aches and pains that we write off to getting older. Oh, my back hurts when I do this or that, and it's just, well, what do you expect? I'm in my 60s, I'm in my 70s. No. Physical therapy can go a long way toward relieving the aches and pains, um, toward getting you a better range of motion, enabling you to do the things you might not have been able to do. Um, but for me, one of the big things I lost as my knees started to, well, fail. Um, I just, I, not to put too fine a point on it, but, you know, fail. The right knee failed completely, and there's nothing but fake bits and pieces in there now. And the left one will be joining it soon enough, and there will be nothing but fake bits and pieces in that one, too. For me is getting down on my hands and knees and getting up again and that was particularly important to me because years ago I had a neighbor who fell she was not injured in the fall um, she just couldn't get up again and how I just don't even know how crazy lucky it was that I was walking past her window and heard her scream because I was in fact on my way to go off for the weekend and she could have very well been laying on the floor you know like, like that well good Lord I don't even want to think about that we're able to get her up you know and and she as I say she wasn't injured she just couldn't get up 
But another woman I knew fell, broke her hip, couldn't get up, and she was lying on the floor for four days. When you get to be our age, as older people, you start hearing stories like that, and you start thinking, gee, I would rather that not be me. Well, getting up off my hands and knees was really very important to me. And I can do it, so I'm happy. For somebody else, it might be something completely different. Just being able to move your arms, your shoulders, twist, turn, whatever it is. Keep in mind, first of all, most physical therapists will offer a free evaluation. You should always check this out. Physical therapy is covered by Medicare and if you have a secondary insurance, there won't even be a copay, you know, depending on your secondary insurance. Um, so this is something that it's a legitimate medical treatment. It's not anything weird or crazy. It will be paid for by insurance. And I'm, I'm going to stop here. I have um, the office manager from my physical therapy center. I got her to talk about this. So I'm going to let Amy talk to you about how you get your referrals and how it gets paid for and all that technical stuff. So here's Amy explaining the nuts and bolts of physical therapy from the business side. For sure. So when I think about people that come in for physical therapy, the insurance sort of dictates um, what paperwork we need to have on file um, for the, their insurance in order to cover their claims. Most insurances um, expect a, a prescription from a physician in order for physical therapy to be achieved. So you would need a referral, we call it a prescription, from your doctor that simply states um, evaluate and treat and for the body part that you're coming in for. So if you're having knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain, it would be evaluate and treat for shoulder pain, evaluate and treat for hip pain, that sort of thing. Um, most insurances allow um, a benefit for physical therapy. Um, that can come in the form of a dollar amount or that can come in the form of a visit count. Um, for example, Medicare has a cap of a dollar amount um, that when you reach, we have to determine whether or not it's medically necessary for you to continue with your physical therapy. Or some of the Medicare replacement programs have a visit count, meaning they're only going to give you 10, 20, 30 visits for the year. Not per body part, but it's a physical therapy benefit for the year. Um, so what we'll do here at the office is we will um, advise you on the phone that when you call, that you're saying that you'd like to come, let's just go with shoulder pain. Um, we'll say, what insurance do you have? We'll advise you that, yes, you'll need a prescription from your doctor. Um, sometimes doctors will write that prescription without you actually having an appointment. You would give them a call up so that you're looking at to obtain physical therapy. Um, and you would want to come to us, and they could fax us that, or they would call us and just to confirm the fact that we are treating you or seeing you um, in order to send that prescription over. Once the prescription is obtained, you have your appointment, and then you would we would verify your benefits. All, there's so many insurance plans out there right now um, that have just different benefits that we would verify ahead of time so that when you're coming in for your appointment, we're very clearly indicating that, um, yes, you have a copay, yes, you have coinsurance, or you have a deductible that needs met, what your visit limit may be so that you're well informed that you can come for 20 visits of physical therapy for your shoulder with a $20 copay. Um, or if there is no copay, um, we would just simply tell you you have your deductible to be met and then, then it's covered at 100%. Um, I'd like a little disclaimer on that, that most insurances, um, they don't guarantee benefits with us, only the, when your claim is processed is what they'll guarantee. So we do our best, we do it as a courtesy, but we would want clients to uh, be an advocate for their own insurance. Make sure that you understand so that when we verify stuff, you know what it should be, that things are matching up when you come in for the front desk. Um, and then what happens is that the, the clinician, once they see you and they evaluate you, um, they put you on a plan of care, meaning if you have shoulder pain, they may see that it's only going to take four weeks to clear things up. 
and then we always make sure that your benefit is in place in order that whatever that plan of care is if it's four weeks at two times a week we make sure that you have what you need whether it's an authorization or and even visits that are left over or that dollar amount that's left over to be covered for your services well if you can believe it amy was terrified when i started with that camera she said there's no way i can talk on camera Oh God, she's a natural, isn't she? If you go into a physical therapy office, they will have their own version of Amy. It probably won't be as good, but hey. Anyway, they'll have their own version of Amy who will be able to get billing sorted out, make sure that your insurance is paying for what it's supposed to, and they can let you know exactly what, if any, your costs will be. So absolutely pick up the phone, make a call. Um, oh, and by the way, Amy's not the only one that I have. Um, my physical therapist is uh, Steve, and I got Steve on camera too. So let's let Steve talk to you a minute about physical therapy because this is um, a, a licensed physical therapist. I don't care what your desk looks like. Okay, what we have here is my physical therapist. This is Steve Miller. He has been my physical therapist for almost 10 years. And he's the reason we can take this road trip because, well, you know, it's true. Um, if it wasn't for Steve, the idea of walking around the city would just be out of my grasp, as he well knows. Mm -hmm. So, I figured I would come in here and give Steve a couple of minutes to talk about the value of physical therapy, because although I consider myself to be a walking testimonial, like literally this is why I'm walking, this is his business. So, hit it, Steve. Okay. Um, well... And Sue knows this, but um, it's probably second nature to her. But, you know, what we really love to do is help people get back to doing the things they need, want, and love to do. Um, when, we, when we see people in here, we really we care from the front desk all the way to the, the clinical side. Of, you know, what, what is actually the thing that you're having issues with? What's your major goal? And that's what we try to help people get back to. And a lot of places uh, pay attention to, you know, range of motion measurements and, uh, you know, strength measurements and things like that. And those are good. Um, but the biggest thing is, what does that person need to get back to, you know? And I know for Sue, uh, really what she needed to do was get back to walking, you know, get back to climbing stairs. She's very independent. Um, and having a surgery, you know, is one thing that really, uh, you know, put, put, a, put a wrench into that system. So that was our goal for her, you know, is to be able to get back to walking uh, for five miles a day, not just walking back and forth in her apartment, but walking five miles, being able to go up and down the stairs, get on and off the floor. Um, those are the sorts of things that, that you know, we know people, by the time people come to us, that's the thing they're looking for. They're not necessarily looking to get out of pain, although that would be nice, but they don't come to us when they're in pain. They come to us when they can't do what they want to be able to do. So that's what our goal is, to be able to get back, people back to doing what they need, want, and love to do and basically get their life back. Um, I, I adore Steve. Steve is the person who has kept me mobile for 10 years. He's the person who's going to keep me mobile until I'm 100. And, you know, it's it's great. Um, just the physical therapy center in general. And by the way, it's Cardin Miller. So if you happen to be in the area of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, you want a physical therapist, that's the one you want. Just trust me on this. I did my homework. I chose carefully. Um, and I chose the best physical therapy place around. Uh, so yeah, if you're in my area, I'll give you my list. Doctors, dentists, physical therapists, because I research everything uh, until I've even made myself crazy. But that's how I get the best medical professionals. Um, I'm willing to do what it takes, including changing doctors every three months till I find a good one, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, the, the physical therapy center is, is great. They are taking care of me because 
everything is based on my goals, what I want out of it. I will go in and say, I want to walk seven miles. And nobody looks at me and says, I don't think that's a good plan. They're like, we're going to help you do it. Oh, God, I love that. It's like, and you know what? Because that's their focus, we're doing it. You know, nobody's looking at me saying, you know, at your age, you ought to slow down. No, no. And it's fantastic because they are partners in my wellness. And so this is what I wanted to pass on to you, that a good physical therapist should be part of your team. Even if you do not need the physical therapist at this particular moment, there are always times when you're going to. Um, usually at least once every summer, I will be bending over, pulling some sort of nasty old weed out of the garden, and after I go to the allergist to treat the rash I've gotten from pulling the nasty old weed out without gloves, I end up in with the physical therapist to deal with the backache I got from bending over in a way I shouldn't have, etc., etc., because our, our minds tell us that we've been doing this. I've been bending over. I shouldn't have any problems pivoting. Of course I can pivot. That, by the way, is how I tore the meniscus tissue in my right knee that eventually had me going in for arthroscopic surgery. Of course I can pivot. Well, guess what? You know, I couldn't because our bodies are changing. So what I want to uh, have you take away from this is anything that is going on with your body, your physical therapist is going to be your best friend really. They will deal with you in a way the doctors won't. Doctors, uh, and, and I have an excellent doctor, but doctors are not going to stretch out a cranky knee. Doctors are not going to put pressure on your shoulder until it's moving the way it's supposed to. That's what a physical therapist is going to do. So give it a shot. Check it out. If any of you are looking at knee replacement surgery, at hip replacement surgery, at surgery for your shoulders, um, back surgery, anything like this, go see a physical therapist. Get them on board and make sure they are a part of your team. It will make a huge difference. It has for me. And... That's one of the reasons that I'm, I'm pushing this. It's like, go see a physical therapist because I know if it were not for physical therapy, I couldn't do half of what I can do right now. I know who I owe that to. All right. Very quickly, let's see about word origins. Um, oh, and as you can see, Audie is here and he's fine. All right. Word origins. This is difficult because I've got this little guy in my lap. Yes, I know. Because he couldn't bear the fact that we were filming without him. So let's just see what we've got. Jade, cure for colic. When the Spanish brought this green stone from America, they named it Piedra de Ijada, or Stone of the Side, because they thought that jade was a cure for pain in the side or colic. Old French adopted the name as Le Jade, and later Le Jade, and we took the jade part into English. All right, knickers. Early settlers wore them. In England, knickers are unmentionables for ladies, but with Americans, they are the short, full, in and out, in and out of style trousers for outdoor men who play golf and such. Knickers is a shortening of Knickerbocker, one of the most resonant and prevalent Dutch names of the early settlers of New Amsterdam. The wide, loose trousers of these first immigrants have long been the objects of a good deal of choking. And 
Now, as I recall, that came to us through um, a newspaper feature uh, from Colonial New York that was called like Knickerbocker Tales or something like that. Uh, one of the things that most of us really don't know is that American colonial history, especially in places like New York and uh, Philadelphia, had strong, strong Dutch roots. So, yeah, I get that. Um, also, interestingly enough, strong Danish roots. We tend to think of colonial America as being peopled by colonists of English or English, Scottish, Irish descent, that we were all from the British Isles. No, no. Uh, the roots were much more diverse than that. And I seem to recall Benjamin Franklin complaining that it was it something like you could walk down the streets of Philadelphia and hear 30 some odd languages being spoken and we ought to declare English to be America's national language. And as we all know, we do not have a national language. English is here out of convenience and not out of law. All right, tomorrow we are going to do our survival sewing, the sewing we need to repair clothing, stitch up tears, reattach a button, secure a hem, that little bit, and we're starting very, very small. We're not using a machine, we're using a needle and thread, and it's going to be the first of our little sewing tutorials. So we're starting tiny baby steps. Okay, I will see you all tomorrow.